maybe also changing these kind of impact measures. And, and I think it would be uh, very important that as a community you also contributed to those kind of discussions within tourism research and maybe beyond that, right? Uh, I think that this is sort of a common struggle that many are engaged in, which actually also has to do with the uh, commitment to maybe other understandings of what is important other than economic growth, so also talking to post-growth uh, uh, discussions and so forth within the scientific community. So uh, coupling these, I think, would be really beneficial. Very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to, to, to add, um, as, um, yeah, um, I was just thinking of what we can, what more we can do um, for more years to come. Um, one thing that, well, well, we're probably already doing it, some of us, but uh, it's also how the research questions are generated. Um, there's uh, more emphasis nowadays uh, on to the um, trying to um, not only collaborate with the community or this community-based research, but also that the people who are from the community or the tourist entrepreneurs, they are the ones who are um, formulating those questions and giving it to us in order to, to give our expert opinion on things or help them out to, to generate the, um, the experiences from other places where they have similar problems so that uh, those, um, those problematic happenings in Greenland or Iceland um, would not happen in the destinations uh, that are on a go and developing and wanting to develop because they think that yeah, the tourism can help in many different ways um, so that they would avoid mistakes. So then um, it would be kind of turning things upside down, not us going to communities and you know, starting dialogue, but um, this dialogue sort of already yeah, turning it yeah, in the other way. So I think that that's something that also very important that we listen to um, other pr providers of knowledge to us and, and try to incorporate it into our research questions that we pose. And then there we might uh, end up with very interesting combinations and, and things that we have never thought of because our yeah those who are financing our research have not thought of that. But the community response or this commu this uh, connection to the community it's a prerequisite for us getting the the research money. So we might as well go out there and listen mm -hmm. and then come back to the and write the research proposal. So yeah. Did it. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, partly. Okay. I mean, I, I agree with you partly, but not totally. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's kind of. Um, I agree. I mean, uh, for me, good research is kind of engaged with uh, with uh, the other part of the research. I mean, if, if I'm not it's interested, not, uh, if I'm not yeah, interested yeah. in the community yeah. that I study, sure. I, I shouldn't do it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So from that point, I mean, but for me, that is more kind of a constant process. I mean, it should be a constant process. Mm -hmm. I should. To try to have a kind of an ongoing conversation rather than coming in and saying, "Here I am." So now mm -hmm. give me the questions. And I think <laughs> it's not what you mean, no. of course. But I think that it's important to point out that it's kind of not this kind of "Here I am and now I'm gone," uh, but but rather this kind of constant commitment <laughs> to a certain topic, and and that is important. I think. But then once again, I think uh, at one stage we have to remind ourselves. I mean, what I mean. Although, although I, I, I like this idea of solving practical problems, I think science is not necessarily all about that. It's about finding new knowledge. And, and I think if we, are, if we are going too much into a consultancy direction, we are kind of underrating the position of tourism research and also the political value of it in terms of, kind of influencing government, for instance. I mean, in the Nordic situation, I mean, if you talk about bibliometrics, we are in the lucky situation that a lot of the Nordic uh, countries use the so-called Norwegian bibliometric list, which by default disqualifies tourism as excellent. And, uh, and so, so, I mean, we are in a lucky situation that we can do whatever we want, because nobody cares anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, that's a little bit of a cynic uh, comment, of course. But I think that's, in a way, I mean, we should reflect upon that. I mean, we are not there. And, and I think there, there is a lot to be done in order to push, actually, the, the role of tourism 
research forward and, and, and to look for, for making it actually matter. I mean, a lot of us, not all of us, I mean, we're in departments with other headings. I'm not in a tourism department, I'm in a geography department. And we started with tourism, I mean, that was something for kind of the second uh, selection researcher people to engage in. Because it was not taken seriously and people thought, oh, that's the people who ought to travel to the nice conference locations. That, that was the major uh, kind of uh, um, argument for, for, for or the explanation why people would be interested in that phenomenon anyway. And I think it's still very, very, <laughs> very important even today to say that, I mean, that's one of the major, I think, game changers in society, that we travel that much, that we are global, that, uh, that it affects uh, communities in a way that they never have been affected before, that we are interconnected in various ways, that we meet people from all over the globe, independent where we are, more or less. And I think that is such a, a great change, and, and there we have really a role to play, and we have to kind of communicate these kind of changes and the impacts that these changes are doing. I think that is a, a really important assignment, actually. But I think we have a really long way to go for that. And, and I think that's where we are starting to walk that line of we, we actually need to do both. We need to be the applied researcher and answer the question for the communities, but we also need to start thinking future thinking and being the let's get into the theoretical and let's get into the policy game changing because as scholars, that's where we have a real position of power. Mm -hmm. I can say, except in Trump's America where science is all discounted, <laughs> no the rest of us can say things that maybe the community member can't mm -hmm. and we can be that critical voice due to our, mm -hmm. you know, our academic freedom and our mm -hmm. position. And I think mm -hmm. it's important that we, as the Arctic and both polar regions are more in the news and China wants to do more there and things as an academic community, we're seen as this voice of, um, this consistent voice in many respects around where things are going. Right? But then um, we're sort of making a loop in our discussion already what in order for our critical voice to be heard then we need to utilize the tools of communication mm -hmm. that is uh, you know in Spanish, in French, in Russian or in any other languages where we think that these are the groups of people who are supposed to listen, but they still do not get it. They do not understand, or they are ignorant, or, well, because Trump obviously understands <laughs> English, I suppose, but maybe. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah. no, but still then, then, you know, when it comes to Russian politicians, then I think that, you know, the translation would really help, and I guess the Chinese too. Um, so depending on what groups are we trying to, to reach, then we still need to have this yeah, availability yeah. of our critical knowledge put into the you know, right kind of level of understanding, not being mm. overly critical and academic, but speaking the language that people understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's our communal responsibility in a sense. I mean, as Dieter said, it, I, I, I see it as my responsibility to translate what's going on here mm. into the Icelandic context so, and relate yeah. it into that context in Icelandic. Yeah. And I try to do that. So. But we should, my, my yeah, and we should be reminding ourselves about that constantly. Mm -hmm. As researchers, we are privileged, and you know we can afford to be critical and travel to these fantastic places. So we we are responsible. Just a small point from the point of view of the of the care as a network. If we're doing all this good stuff, whether in Icelandic or in Iceland through English, or wherever we're doing it, we should also be cataloging it somehow. Because otherwise, we were doing a lot of stuff that we maybe don't realize we're doing as a collective. Yeah. That's maybe one small point. And a second small point for the steering committee, the IPTRN, um, we often talk about how we need to de democratize tourism, but we probably need to figure out how we can democratize our network a little bit better and the organization. Because it seems it seems to me from the inside that we all we, we do a good job, but we do a volunteer job. But maybe and then maybe we struggle to find the time to do all these wonderful things. But maybe if we somehow think about opening up at some level. We can have more people involved in trying to get this uh, type of thing going because we, it's hard, it seems to be something that's not as easy to do when you actually sit down and try to do it after the panel. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just as something is, the, the cataloging was done at the beginning of the network, and this is something that was decided to drop. Mm -hmm. But that, that was done at the beginning. 
and it was done in two languages. And then it was decided that we don't do this anymore. Why, why was that? I, I guess I can answer it to a, to a small respect. I mean, we were doing a cataloging that was duplicating a cataloging that was already happening elsewhere by the Siret group. And, oh, and, and, and so yeah. we were cataloging things, and they were yeah. cataloging things. And, and so it, it felt like, given that we've got limited people and resources, there's no long, there's, there's not really a need to do Yeah, except the whole thing Siret. And it no longer exists, so, so we could come back into the fold if yeah. need be. Uh, but I think the UARCTIC did, did I think it was the UARCTIC. A nice initiative saying that I mean people should, for instance, add Arctic or polar as a kind of a keyword on the Google Scholar accounts, for instance, yes. that really mm -hmm. kind of would enable these kind of things, mm -hmm. or, or or whatever academia or research data, mm -hmm. you know, these kind of things. So well, so those tools came along yes. since we yes. even had that discussion because. Now anyone could go on Google Scholar, ResearchGate, Academica, and find all of the same stuff that we spent a lot of time. Yeah, except that there's a point to the network, it points to those individuals. So yeah. if we could have the, the bank connecting all those research to the website of the network, then it brings us to the, 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 the four, uh, four liner. And like in, in terms of media, when something happened with the ship, for instance, they would find that it be a tourism network and it would find us to come in. But then there is an addition. We have the biannual complex publication, so this do need to some, some, in a sense, the state of the mm -hmm. right. We could just put more, more focus, especially into the editorial, uh, around summing up some of the key mm -hmm. items and references. <coughs> that could be the capital. It's a good time to start wrapping it up. Final comments at the very end. Maybe yeah. some final comments. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a wrap up comment. Um, I texted the acronym IPTRN to somebody not long ago, and it auto corrected to upturn. <laughs> <laughs> upturn. Um, and I, <laughs> yeah, the song in that I think. Um, and it struck me that, uh, look, there's going to be twists and turns along the, along the way, and the next 10 years are going to be characterized by twists and turns. Um, and I think this critical reflection, this kind of panel discussion where we're engaging with uh, the wider IPTR community is so important. And um, could I make a suggestion that this, this kind of critical reflection happens at each of the, the following uh, meetings? Because I think if we if, if we're not outward looking, we're in danger. Do, do the panelists want to make any final final comments? Any points of pontification or do a pontification? <laughs> no, the one thing I want to the one thing I wanted to mention is you know we, we, we kind of always a little bit um, we have a complex we tourism researchers about you know our position in universities our position in kind of academe and this is a problem I, I've been working in this, this in this subject for almost thirty years so I've, it's been a long road but I would say that the state of tourism research today is in good hands and uh, it, it's progressed. Dramatically, I think the theoretical kind of upswing um, is quite strong. And I'm, you know, again, if you go back to the new students and uh, you know some of my PhD students, the, um, the the type of research that's coming out nowadays is theoretically rich. It's um, empirically good. Um, you know, so I think we shouldn't be ashamed of what we do, and we should actually just you know basically sing a song, basically. Or, you know, you know, we don't we don't have to kind of like apologize for being tourism researchers or doing um, tourism related research because I think a lot of, in fact I would say that a lot of people in other disciplines uh, are now beginning to recognize and look um, at the work that we're doing and so I think we've kind of reached legitimacy. Legitimate. So, so yeah. yeah, that's a nice end point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> legitimate. Oh, good. <laughs> that's great to know. You, you still remain legitimate. <laughs> So with that, we'll bring it into the panel, and I hope you all join me in thanking the panel and Dimitri for moderating. Uh, just a couple of little things before we go. Um, so this was a, a 
relatively long day for a first day. It was even longer for us who were up here preparing early morning. But we're done now. We've had a couple of, I think, very interesting, very thought-provoking paper sessions and an even more thought-provoking, a little bit self-reflective and even self-critical at times, um, panel session, which I think is really good and healthy for us as a group going forward. We have a couple of announcements. The shuttles will be outside now. Take you either to your hotel, you come in, or downtown. Um, the shuttle tonight to take you from the Yukon Inn is 7.10 to the Nakai Theatre. And Suzanne is going to say a little something now, give you a little bit of a local knowledge on the theatre event tonight, and maybe on somewhere you might be able to grab some food or something now, I don't know. Uh, something like that. Yes. Uh, just a, yeah, just a couple of little notes. So the shuttle will be leaving shortly, taking you to the Yukon Inn. Uh, and to Riverview Hotel. And if you want to have dinner, there is a restaurant in Yukon, some of you may already know that, but there are many more choices downtown. And it is a 10 to 15 minute walk from the Yukon Inn to some of those restaurants. Um, 